Welcome to this cybersecurity course. Here, we will gain practical skills how to use hardware security to protect better our systems, and we will gain the fundamental knowledge about trusted computing. My name is Demi, and I'm the founder of the largest developers community for hardware security. My background is industrial automation. However, for the past 10 years, I have worked mainly on Internet of Things projects. Feel free to reach out to me on my email, or better yet, leave me a message in the discussion forums in OST2. The motivation for this course is to have better security protection for our systems and our data. Large companies are already using hardware security on a daily basis. For example, Microsoft uses trusted platform modules to protect their end users. Amazon provides virtual trusted platform modules to their cloud customers and users. Apple also with a custom silicon solution protects its end users. Thanks to hardware security, we can have higher guarantees than only software based security. Simply said, software only security is no longer enough. This course will help you use widely available tools and hardware security modules called trusted platform modules or for short TPM. This is the first of just a few introductory lectures teaching us about what is a TPM and when it makes the most sense to use it. When can you receive the highest impact for your system security or your data security, application security, and so on. Then we will go into setting up our laboratory environment for the exercises. And there are many exercises in this course that we have prepared for you. The purpose is to build practical skills using a TPM. Then we will dive deep into the core curriculum with many real life use cases of a TPM and hardware backed security, protecting the file system or individual files, protecting arbitrary data, secrets, user data or system data. We will also learn how to use the built in protection of the TPM against machine in the middle attacks. Because the TPM usually is a physical device and there is a bus, a communication between the host and the TPM, even in the cases when the TPM is just a software module, memory isolated, and so on. And here is the place to mention what is a TPM. TPM is a type of hardware security module. Hardware security modules typically offer strong cryptography, high protection of the generated cryptographic keys, also capabilities like digital signing and others. The TPM is special in that way because it offers all of that and more, including non-volatile memory that can benefit from the TPM 2.0 authorization that is used to protect how and when do we use keys, who can use our keys for what operations. The TPM builds on top of that, adding attestation capabilities, special PCR register that we'll cover in another course. Here, we will focus on cryptography, digital signing, secrets, using the NVRAM, secure storage, and more few words about our laboratory environment that we'll use to run the many exercises that we have prepared for you. Typically, the TPM is a dedicated device or a dedicated software module that could come in a form of a firmware or part of the UFI. There are many variants out there. If you are using a work laptop, it is very possible that the TPM is already being used by your organization to manage and protect the work computer that, you, that you're having. At the same time, if you're running a Microsoft Windows or Linux, 
it could by default enable some protection that leverages the TPM to provide you higher security already. To avoid breaking your system, we are offering ready-to-use Docker environment. Also, there is a way to run all the exercises on the web using free of charge service provided by Docker. That being said, you can also run Walker. Of course, this has its risks. We will provide instructions for all of these three scenarios and we recommend running locally with our Docker environment. This way you can quickly get into the exercises and also try out different things without worrying about breaking your system. We're using open source software stacks and we'll cover these in a moment. This course will offer you both an approach that uses ready to use tools and a separate one where you get behind the scenes look at what it is to build a solution using the API. Of a, this is just a snapshot and some highlights of the exercises that we have prepared for you. All of the exercises here are inspired by real life situations and real life experience. There is a great benefit in making all of the exercises. Also, we've tried to make the learning curve as gradual as possible. So we recommend making the exercises in order. To talk to the TPM, we need to learn the TPM commands, but this would take us a lot of time. Instead, we'll use a TPM software stack. This is just a software library that provides us rich API to perform the various TPM operations with ease. There are at least five well-known TPM stacks with open source license out there. Each of them has a strong side, so it really depends on your environment and your requirements. For example, the TPM2 TSS stack conform to the TCG standard. This is the only stack that provides the three standard APIs. We have SAPI, the system API, ASAPI, the enhanced API, and we have PAPI, the feature API. The latter is the most developer friendly. This is great if you're a beginner because it has a separate project called TPM2 Tools, what we'll be using in this course at the beginning, and it helps you to quickly start using the TPM and a lot of the tools match the names of the TPM to commands. On the other hand, if you have a Windows environment and you would like to use a .NET API, Microsoft have the MSR stack, the TPM stack that comes with a C Sharp API. We also have the IBM stack and the Google stack. Of course, these projects are open source. So I'm just naming the companies that started the projects. Nowadays, there are many companies and individual contributors to these stacks, to these libraries. The GoTPM stack, as the name suggests, provides Golang API, which is great for server and cloud applications. On the other hand, the Wolf TPM stack is designed for embedded systems. So it is really up to the developer to decide which TPM software stack suits you best. In this course, we will start with the TPM2 TSS stack and the TPM2 tools. And we'll move gradually to also exploring behind the scenes with some of the APIs. We already mentioned what is a TPM and HSM. Now comes the time to talk about the hardware root of trust. What is a root of trust? This is something we can always trust thanks to a cryptographic strength, thanks to its cryptographic system. This is where the trust in our computer system begins. This is why it's so important. The TPM is one way to achieve this. The great thing about the TPM is that you can connect it externally to the system or you can have it internally as a firmware or software module. To understand why root of trust is important and what kind of benefits it gives us, I would like to make the analogy, a comparison, how we travel with airplanes. We have an ID document that is a proof of who we are. Based on that proof, an identity check, we're either allowed inside the airport to reach the gate and board the plane, or we're turned back. Depending on where you live, the ID card is usually issued by a government entity. Here in Bulgaria, this is the Ministry of Interior. And when at first the police officers or the customs agent uh, looks at you, they check the physical traits that you have and compare it with the information that is on the ID card. 
what is the color of your hair, what's the color of your eyes, maybe the height, the name, do you respond to your name, these kind of things. This is the, just the first step. The next step is the police officer to actually perform a validity check of your ID by asking the authority that created, crafted, issued the ID to verify that this is a genuine ID. Now, this is similar to what a TPM can do for our computer system. A TPM can provide us this root of trust by performing secure digital signatures, also to create highly secure reports about the claims that we make, the state of the system, and so on. This is possible thanks to special platform configuration registers called PCRs that we'll learn in the advanced course. For now, let's just stick with the identity. The TPM provides a unique private key material that never leaves the TPM. It can be created and recreated again and again inside the TPM, and it can serve as a machine identity. There are pros to doing that, and there are some disadvantages. So if you want, you can generate a different primary key on the TPM to serve as an identity. In all of these cases, the TPM is the only entity that can use this key. It lives only inside the TPM, where it is in a state to be used, create digital signatures, authenticate a message, confirm the validity of proof that has been generated. So this is similar to boarding a plane and going through customs where your ID is checked. In an essence, a TPM can help you provide machine identity, can help you create health checks, and can also securely encrypt and decrypt different parts of your system, seal secrets, and so on, so on all starts with the root of trust where we know that the TPM provides high guarantee system with cryptographic capabilities. We will also talk about how can we be sure that the TPM is genuine. This will come later in the first lecture of our core curriculum. Many of you are probably already asking if your device that you're using right now, a phone or a laptop or a desktop computer, has a root of trust. Before, TPMs were natural to servers and desktop computers. Nowadays, we could say they're almost everywhere, including there is a trend of adding TPMs to embedded systems. But TPM is not the only type of hardware security module you can use. There are secure elements, there are smart cards, and so on and so on. Smartphones nowadays have a type of HSM depending on the model and the manufacturer. So yes, your system most likely, 99% I would say, has a root of trust. And to use that is important to either protect an application, its configuration, or the user data. And this is the purpose of this course, to enable you to use the TPM for your application, for your project, whenever it is available. Of course, there are various implementations. As we mentioned earlier, it could be a physical one, it could be a virtual one if it's a cloud environment, it could be a firmware or a software module. What you need to know is that the TPM may come in many forms, but it uses a standardized API. And the interface to the TPM is always the same. This means that your application would have portability, which I think is great. So what can we do with a TPM? We can protect individual parts of the system and files. Also, we can use the TPM to manage our private keys that are used for remote logging, VPN, SSH, and other use cases, including there is a PKSS 11 plugin that we can use. We can also protect arbitrary data or store critical or sensitive information. In some cases, this could be a certificate. In some cases, it could be a private key, private key material, and so on and so on. I've seen many applications. For example, I've seen a counter application which uses the TPM's NVRAM to measure the distance traveled by a vehicle. I've seen applications where the TPM is used to generate proof about the bandwidth counter or on a network adapter. And this brings us to the next topic. Other than a secure storage, thanks to the root of trust for storage that the TPM provides, we also have a root of trust for reporting. Root of trust for reporting provides us different ways to provide evidence about what we claim. This could be a message, this could be a hash, this could be the state of the system or a different metric. As I mentioned, it could be the bandwidth of a network card, how much traffic has flown for this month or this year and so on. Including the TPM provides internal flags that are available to check if the TPM has been compromised, has detected an attempt or dictionary attack 
or some other form of compromise. And this is also a great quality of the TPMs. Today we learned that software-based security is no longer enough and we can easily upgrade by adding TPM-backed security. To achieve this, there are TPM software stack libraries that we can use depending on our environment. Also, there are TPM2 tools openly available that can speed up our development and getting to know the TPM. And this is with what we'll start. One important factor of recommending the TPM as a solution is that it can have multiple users if needed, multiple owners, sort of speak, thanks to its capability to support multiple key hierarchies. And we'll talk more about this in the in the first uh, core curriculum that we'll have. Also, important trait of the TPM is its built-in protection against machine in the middle. You may have heard about TPM sniffing attacks. Usually, in most of the cases, it is about misconfiguration, either by the OEM or by an OS vendor, the building protection of the TPM has to be enabled in order to work. And either it's enabled late in the power cycle or it's not enabled at all. And because this is recognized as a pain point that in some cases OEM vendors do not enable this protection, there is an improvement coming that the communication of the TPM will be encrypted by default without having to rely on the OEM or the vendor to enable that encryption. But even today, the TPM is secure from machine in the middle attacks. It's just a matter of knowing how to enable that protection. And we take a significant focus on this topic in this course. 